All right, guys, we're back with part four of the Kubota project. I worked on getting the doors painted. Um, right now, it's really only one side. So here's the driver's door. I have the one side, the outside painted, and the passenger door, the inside painted. All right, so the plow mount here it is it's I basically I've already bolted it on there and torqued it basically it's a thick bracket the two receiving points it's got four four bolts and the existing nuts that were on here welded on from the factory were shot you know the bolts were stripped and so I got uh, a washer a lock washer and a nylock nut so that I don't really have to worry about them backing off. Um, the, the instructions do say that you should retort them after five to ten hours of usage. So it's probably smart to do that. And so these are the receiving brackets for the plow itself. So you pull these pins out. Pull these pins. And then, basically you just put them in the receptacle, and with one hand I will try to... Put one pin in, and you basically just get the pins, and put the two pins in, and then use the cotter pins to lock them in. And so now all you have to do is drive up to the plow, and then push up on the tower and it locks in. Um, I don't have any of the wiring hooked up yet. So for right now, I just got the mount put on and I'm gonna work on getting, I'm gonna look in at the, what the manual says on for the wiring and I'm gonna try to get it hooked up so that I can move the plow and get it out of the scoop position that it's in because, I mean, I still have to paint the middle section of the floor. Let's see if I can get a good, you can get a good look at the floor now with a better light. There's a little bit of smudges over here, but for the most part now it's completely um, bedlinered. And so here's the plow. It's a Western Impact. It's a UTV plow. Um... I have some more video on it. I'm either gonna stick in, I might make a separate video on when I picked it up, it was on two pallets. And I think I did a little bit of a build video on it or when I unboxed it from the, from the pallet. But for the most part, I gotta just get the wiring in for it and then we can get it moved around and, and get this wrapped up for now. And then I can start working on the lights. I want to get make sure I get the plow hooked up because that's the main thing. And then I can get the lighting in. All right, guys, I want to cut back in here before I get too much more done. Um, I was able to wire the, I sent the plow harness through. So you got the lead here. I'm not really sure how I'm going to um, attach it yet. There's a, like a lower grill here. I really wish I could mount it like sideways and have it like an outlet um, But I may just have to leave it loose so that it has slack um, The plow mount is on both receivers are in I ran the Wire for the handheld control. I believe this is a power an ignition like a switched power like this will tell the this will allow the plow to operate when the ignition is on so it doesn't drain from the battery. Um, and then, so it, on the inside, we have the... <clears throat> here's the hookup for the plow right here. This is the receptacle. I'll get the controller in a minute. And then, right now I'm working on the top console piece that I've been talking about. And as you can see, I mocked up the switch panel for the lighting. 
and it's got a 12 volt outlet as well as two USB and a volt meter. So the plan is to probably, I have a fuse panel too, a fuse block, just to protect um, everything that's connected to the switches. So I need to figure out what I wanna do up here. I wanna make some kind of cubby, like a, a little shelf in here or in the front so I can, if I wanna charge my phone or something, I can plug it right in, plug it in up here and, and keep it stuffed in there and just charge it and keep it up out of the way of all the stuff down here. There is a 12 volt outlet here, even though the wires, one of the wires is screwed up. I'm probably gonna leave that and then I have the bracket for the plow controller, which I'll also get in a second. But so right now I'm, I'm trying to figure out the way, the route I want to go with this. Take a look from it from the side. You can kind of see, let me get it from the other side. So it's kind of in the middle or it's, it's perfectly in the middle. And then the fuse panel, I'm assuming I'm gonna put it, it's not gonna be, it can't be flush mounted. It's gotta be mounted up inside somewhere because it's gonna have to have the wires and stuff. So I don't think, I don't really want it exposed because you're gonna see all the wires coming off of it and stuff. So I'm probably gonna try to keep it hidden somewhere in there. And there's really nothing else. I really I want to add. There's a couple other things I might want to add, like a scanner. The pro only issue that I'm I'm seeming that I might run into is you really don't have that much depth up here. So like if you put anything like a scanner, like like long, it won't it won't fit. The only way I'd be able to manage it is if I got like the control head and mounted the control head up here. So. That's an option. I'll have to try to find one because I know I, they're not as um, common as they used to be. For scanners at least. And then, yeah. So you can see the, this is the plow harness here. I wrapped, I wrapped it all in the, this little, you know, wire loom stuff. You can see it on the floor right there. And just started to zip tie some of it. I didn't get excessive with it because I don't know I want to make sure that I have enough length and all that stuff and so let me get the here's the this is the box with the mount in it for the thing let me get the let me get the plow controller all right so here's the plow control handheld control and so I have a couple options on where I can put it um, it comes with this little triangular looking bracket, which has to go like this. I'll show you on the, the controller itself. Um, is it this on it? So you set that like that. <clears throat> so I can put it here. I don't know if I want to put it in the middle down here like that. Um, off to the side here doesn't look too bad. And it's, I mean, it won't interfere. I guess the out, having the outlet here might be useful if I ever had something that I wanted to place on the seat to charge rather than have it up, up top. But, so maybe I'll put it off to the side here, you know, on this little piece just make sure it's level so it looks straight and then just zip it in and then this I'm gonna have to hot glue I think this uh, plow control piece I mean once it's plugged in it's never gonna get unplugged the only thing is when you move back and forth with the controller and if it gets caught I mean it's it'll be secure in here for the most part I just don't want it falling out you know and getting tangled in you know when you're trying to use the gas pedal or something so basically I'm, I have to figure out, I mean, I'm, that's, I think the most ideal spot for it and I would need to switch. I mean, these, 
I might relabel these with like just labels. And uh, the work light switch down here is basically going to be obsolete because I'm going to change it to probably just a, there, there is a switch for roof lights, those front working lights. So I'd rather have, you know, the switch up there because then I can eliminate, you got these two harnesses running down, one's for the wiper and then one's for the lights. And so I can get rid of one and then just run, run it straight off of my fuse block my fuse block which is going to be up here anyway so i think that's the game plan and i think that's pretty much it um the doors like i had mentioned earlier i painted one side one of each side of the doors and we got to work on getting this middle of the floor back in so i don't have to watch where i'm stepping all the time um I'm probably going to get a mat for the middle, even though it is bedlinered. I don't know if I'm going to get another rubber mat for it, just, just to preserve the... I mean, the bedliner is going to hold up. I just don't want to wreck it. I mean, now that, now that it's basically waterproof, you know, there's no worry about moisture sitting on here. We'll see, I guess, you know, a couple... I'll use it once in the snow and see what what happens with the um, with the water and stuff if it sits or if it gets like really slippery. I mean, it's got a it's got a little bit of an abrasive surface, or, you know, like a little texture to it. So that's pretty much it. Um, and then I'm hoping if I decide to cut out any more of this, I'll probably stick it in this video.